drugs are the same because once you find out the, the softer ones aren't that bad for you, maybe you're tempted to, to try the harder ones. That is one of the enormous damages of this prohibition policy. It's how it brings government education policy into disrepute because unless you tell the truth, you're not going to be able to educate and, and reduce the harm that drugs can do, even cannabis can do. As the need for more open debate about cannabis became more obvious in the 1990s, the BBC's flagship soap opera, EastEnders, took on the subject several times. In 1993, in an attempt to grasp the nettle of recreational cannabis use, a group of characters went on holiday to Amsterdam, so the issue could be raised without the characters being seen to break the law. But you don't smoke. I do now. What if the police came in? They wouldn't say anything. Well, I'm not waiting around to find out. Sit down. Right? Have some of that. I don't want any. Of course you do. I don't smoke. Well, you should start. The most recent storyline involved Dot Cotton unwittingly using cannabis to help with her glaucoma. Sounds a bit dubious to me. So what help to use this then? Well, it's what I used, you know, to get rid of my dreadful headaches. My lady said it's good for all sorts, especially glaucoma. I mean, I've heard of wonder cures, but this, it's a miracle. We thought the Doc Cotton example of looking at drugs was just to be able to do something a bit different. You know, it, we've done Nick Cotton and the obvious baddie dealing drugs and taking drugs and becoming a drug addict and, and going on the slippery slope. Tastes just like cannabis. Of course it does. In line with the programme's overall stance on drugs, even Dot paid for breaking the law. It is cannabis. <laughs> it's him. It actually had much more of an impact. It raised much more a debate about whether drugs should be used in that way for medicinal purposes. And should you turn a blind eye? Should the, the Doc Cottons of this world be arrested? Does that make her a drug addict? Dorothy Cotton, I'm arresting you on suspicion of possessing Class B drugs. It is the new millennium. And at the Tory party conference, someone else who was prepared to make a drama out of drugs was about to take centre stage. The Right Honourable Anne Whittaker. Drugs are a scourge on our society. They are a cancer which threatens our very future. I remember standing in the hall and she was doing one of her great uh, performances without uh, notes and just doing this sort of standing at the front and pacing up and down. I believe that it is possible in addressing the scourge of drugs to have a policy right throughout the chain from supply and demand of zero tolerance. And suddenly she came out with this statement about uh, zero tolerance with cannabis. And I remember thinking instantly, why is she saying this? Because it is not going to play with the voters, with the majority of voters. That means that if you are caught in possession of drugs, there will be no more turning of blind eyes, no more issuing just a caution. You will face for a first offence a minimum of a fixed penalty of a £100 fine. Surrender to the drugs menace. We couldn't do that, we shouldn't do that, and we won't do that. On the face of it, that speech went down well. And 30 years ago, a Tory delivering a hardline message on drugs could have expected a safe passage to the next election. But times have changed. <laughs> I mean, she just, I mean, just killed herself stone dead, didn't she? Killed herself stone dead. It was incredible how Anne Whittacombe, with one comment, managed to achieve almost more than we've done in 10 or 15 years. And she certainly kick-started uh, the debate back into the public arena. From the Conservative Party, new thinking on soft drugs. What is that whiff from the Tory torch? Good evening. Peter Lilly, who was deputy leader of the Conservative Party, wants cannabis legalised. He's not just This would have been unthinkable even five years ago. But the debate about cannabis has moved on to such an extent that even among politicians, there is now widespread tacit acceptance of its use. 
Today, cannabis has come to exist in a kind of twilight zone of confusing semi-legality. Police in Lambeth in South London have begun a six-month experiment. Anyone caught with cannabis will be given an informal warning rather than being arrested and cautioned or prosecuted. It sounds like we're all over the place. We will still have, you know, what they call postcode policing mm -hmm. in the sense that there will be some constabularies that will come down hard on this. I mean, I suspect the constabularies in London will be more lenient than some out, outside of London. Police closed down Britain's first cannabis shop today after a scuffle with its owners. The shop, the Dutch experience in Manchester, had opened for the first time. The media still gets excited when young people smoke cannabis. Prince Harry has returned to his home at Highgrove House in Gloucestershire this lunchtime, following revelations in a Sunday newspaper that he'd been involved in heavy drinking and had taken cannabis. It's hard to ignore that someone like that has admitted to smoking a spliff but I mean what, what that does say to you is just how incredibly common it is and that it is sort of everywhere and it's, it, it's not just a kind of some down and out um, it, it's all over the place it's, it's everybody's children and all the major political parties seem to see being soft on cannabis as a way to win votes the possession of cannabis should no longer be an arrestable offence the words of the Home Secretary David Blunkett Downgrading cannabis, doctors say it's not as dangerous as other Class B drugs. In the most radical shift of drugs policy from any of Britain's major parties, the Liberal Democrats have voted to press for the legalisation of cannabis. We appear to be on the edge of a change in what must be one of our most defiantly flouted laws. But if the chequered history of cannabis in this country, since it was banned in 1928, tells us anything, it is that nothing is likely to be that simple. Here we are over 70 years later, um, and we're just beginning to break down some of the sort of prejudices and stereotypes about a relatively harmless drug. What it says is if people think the drug's going to be legalised next month, they've got, they better not hold their breath. Keep going. Keep inhaling. Come on. More. Hey, y'all hit that real pretty part right here, cuz. Gurus next tonight on BBC4 on BBC2 of all sorts with varying influence and specialities from the Maharishi to Trini and Susanna. Time shift in a moment.